I'm Carrie Ann Hobbs, and I work at the Air Force Research Lab in the Autonomous Controls Branch. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Lexi Plunkett, and I'm the material leader for F-22 Modernization. So my name is Patricia Hill. I am the Programs Chief for the 76 AMXG Maintenance Group here at Tinker Air Force Base. So if you guys were to actually shadow me and follow me around, you'll see me in a lot of meetings. You'll see me checking a lot of emails. You'll see me sometimes going out and harassing the squadrons. So we have five different squadrons here. So I go out and do spot inspections, safety inspections like that, correct people if they're doing anything incorrectly, and just educate the supervisors. So what we do uh, day in and day out is understand where enemies are headed and try to understand the technology that we can implement onto our platform to make it the most deadly and feared aircraft in the world. My job is to design and evaluate uh, autonomous automatic control systems on aircraft. So one of the systems that I worked on was the automatic ground collision avoidance system and the automatic air collision avoidance system. And what these systems do is that they detect when a collision uh, between an aircraft and the ground or two aircraft is about to happen. And it automatically maneuvers without the pilot having to do anything to avoid the collision. When I first got excited about the F-22 Raptor was on my graduation from the United States Air Force Academy, and I got to see it on um, its first demonstration flight in 2004. Um, it was about 20 minutes, and my parents wanted to leave, and all I could do was uh, look up with my jaw dropped. And basically, ever since that moment, I've kind of been obsessed with somehow impacting the future of the F-22 Raptor. So I grew up in Houston, Texas, and uh, the Johnson Space Center has the Space Center Houston that's there. It's kind of this public museum. And when I was six years old, my family went to the Space Center and we went to all the major exhibits and even through a video kind of on the Challenger accident. But I decided that day that this was probably the coolest thing that I could imagine. And I wanted to one day grow up and work on spacecraft and aircraft and be on the cutting edge of technology in aerospace. So I think I was probably 10 years old when I understood that that's an aerospace engineer. I was a fuel mechanic. I was a first line supervisor. I was a section chief. Now I'm the program chief for the 76 AMG. So I am pretty, uh, I'm a bubbly boss. I'm fun, um, but I'm also, I'm pretty blunt and direct. So if you're messing up anyways, you're gonna know. I'm very, I'm a transparent leader. And so that's what I think most people respect about me. The team that I have is an incredible, world-class, and the technology that I get to see and in integrate onto our weapon system is absolutely amazing. So it's, 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 it feels really good to work on a program like that, and my part is a very small part of a very large team. I think that I don't come to work each day trying to prove myself because I am a woman. I try to do my best each day because I have the privilege to serve and because I have the privilege to uh, wear the uniform of the United States Air Force. If I waste one minute trying to prove myself, that's a minute that I'm not contributing to the mission. I'm not modernizing the F-22, I'm not supporting my team, and we're not maintaining and retaining the advantage against the enemy. Some men, I feel like maybe I have to demand their respect, but I'll eventually get it. Whenever I go into an environment like this, I'm comfortable. So I'm comfortable in production world. I can talk crazy and get on their level. It's, I don't know, it's normal. This is a new day and age, right? So gender and even race, I don't feel like it's that bad now. I mean, I don't feel like just because I'm a woman or because I'm a minority, it's gonna hold me down. I mean, that's just, we're, we're in a different day and age. It's not. So aerospace is very male dominated. I think that the stats are something like 10%. When I went to school in my undergrad at Emory Vittle, it was 18% female. I think that AFIT it was about 7% female, but it was less than 10%. So at some degree I have fun with it because I feel like as soon as I start talking, then, then they, they realize, okay, she's an engineer, she knows what she's talking about, she's competent. But I think there is this, this feeling that you, you almost are representing women and you have to go 110%. And you have to be on your game in a meeting. Um, or even I had a, a friend that they, they, they asked me, why don't you ever make jokes? You, you know, when we're hanging out, you make a ton of jokes, you're funny. And I said, because I feel like if I make a joke at work, then nobody's gonna take me seriously. And maybe, uh, maybe that's not true, but this is kind of this, this, I have to, I'm constantly trying to make sure that I'm being as professional as possible to be taken seriously uh, by my peers. 
a little bit weird when, it, when the first thing that somebody says about me is, oh, she's very fashionable, because I would rather them say, she's a hell of an engineer. So we talk art of the possible here, right? So Patricia's art of the possible life goal is to be an SES. So why can't I? I'm close. I think I can do it. Like I said, anything that I shoot for, to me, I always get it. So I'm pretty sure you, you're looking at your future SES. I love being the material leader for F-22 modernization because I have the best team getting to modernize the best platform in the United States Air Force in the best military in the world. When I was looking at what do I want to do, you know, looking at these kind of industry, academia, or government paths, I ended up choosing the government path from my internship to what I'm doing now because I feel like what I'm doing is specifically to make the country better. It's a way to serve the country without being in the military. And so any decision that I make is, you know, what's best for our, our troops, our soldiers, what's best for our country versus what's best for the bottom line. And to me, I feel like every day that I'm coming into work, I'm able to make a difference. It can be stressful at times, but then I'm also glad that I'm able to help. I mean, everybody needs a Patricia around.